You may love the Astros. Well, you know, if you live in Houston. You may hate the Astros if you live in any place other than Houston. But one thing you can't do is disrespect the Astros because the defending World Series champions look like they're powerful, ready, with an eye to repeat. Brett Chancy, a.k.a. H-Town Wheelhouse, is here for this episode of Locked On MLB. You are Locked On MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all the Major League Baseball. I am your host, Paul Francis Sully. If you don't believe me, there's my lower third. How could I have that if I weren't your pal, Sully? I am an Emmy-nominated television producer who has been a podcaster for well over a decade, and I'm now about to start my fifth season as a host here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Did I mention that? You can follow our show at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter or on Instagram. I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. We're aiming for 1 billion followers. We remain several hundred million shy of that. Let's keep it going, folks. Let's keep it going. Or you can tell your smart device to play podcast Locked On MLB. Or check out some of the other great shows on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Let's uh, where it's your team every day. Um, let's just pick one at random. Just just one out of the sky. How about Locked On Astros with friend of the podcast, Brett Chancy, aka H Town Wheelhouse in the H Town Cave somewhere in an undisclosed area outside of Houston, Texas, <laughs> right. home of your World Series champion. Houston Astros, and please, so I can make every single Dodger and Yankee fan vomit at the same time, yeah. please bring that hat closer to the camera so they yes. can see what's going on. That is Orbit sliding into home plate with a World Series trophy that says World Champs. That's go. right. Five minutes from Mission Control, 28 minutes from Minute Maid Park, where my son and I got to see um, Kyle Schwarber attempt a bunt because I think he gave up and the Astros clinch a World Series title in our town. And so suck is that on that. It ended? I thought it was, I thought it ended no, with it didn't end, no, it it ended with the pop up. I'm just yeah. saying Kyle Schwarber's bunt attempt was one of the most was one of the worst bunt attempts I've ever seen in my life. And we're like, did he just give up? I'm like, I don't think there's much left in the sales there for these guys. That was a great game, but it has been a great off season. It has been. Um, we, you know, but dude, we are chock full of things to talk about in Astros spring training. There's yeah, a well, lot to talk about. Well, let's just, let's, let's just uh, capture some of the main thing. You and I, you were already on when we talked about the signing of Jose Abreu, right. uh, devastating signing for Chicago White Sox fans because Abreu meant so, so much for that team. Uh, I think this is a, such a great move. For the Astros, for for several reasons, but not the least of which, when you have a team that has back-to-back pennants, won the World Series last year, and needs to have something to kind of make sure things don't get stale, I always think bringing in that new face, that new figure, I call it the Paul Molitor effect. One of the last times we had a World Series repeat that was in the Yankees was when Molitor showed up with the Blue Jays in 1993, and there was this little bit of a sense of, Molitor deserves a ring, doesn't he? Well, let's get make sure he gets there one. Go. Abreu is as likable a player as there is in all of baseball. He's obviously a wonderful slugger, and is going to add a wonderful dimension of that, that old-fashioned right-handed masher, that oh, Jim yeah. Rice type, in the middle of that lineup. I'm showing my age by leaning towards Jim Rice, but what do you want from me? And uh, and you know, and as the the Verlanders and the Correas and the Springers have moved on, and the Astros have a have a different look. This is now Jeremy Pena 
has put his thumbprint on it. Framber Valdez, who I, you and I talked about, I think should have been the World Series MVP. No right. disrespect to Jeremy Pena. Christian Javier has now signed to a long term, so we know he's going to be around for a little bit. I think adding Abreu to this lineup gives the team a little bit of a a spark, a new, you know, a, a little bit of keeping things fresh. You know, it's uh, it's having uh, your significant other in the French maid's costume to sort of spice it up, make That's sure right. it don't get stale. Boy, I well, went to, you know, I went to know a weird what? place in this episode. Sorry, Mom. But, uh, you know, I think that's you're, – you're going into this year where this, this defending World Series champion – I don't want to say it's the best-looking defending World Series champion I've ever seen because – the 2021 Dodgers were pretty good. And even though yeah. they didn't win the division, they happened to win 106 ball games the next year, which is not bad for a defense. But this Astros team looks pretty stacked in kind of a weird American League, but I still think right now they're the best team in the American League. Yeah, I, I would have to, you know, echo that sentiment just because, like, you know, Jose Abreu, he got his first RBI double um, the other day when he hit the double into left field. Um, immediately fans from all over Houston were like, he's going to love the Crawford boxes. Um, we love the short ports that has become just really one of the most iconic walls, I think, in all the American League because everybody's seen Jose Altuve, what he's done in the playoffs, mm-hmm. Yuli Gurriel hitting, you know, over that game five of the 2017 World Series. There's, there's all kinds of, you know, momentous occasions that we've had that, you know, and the Crawford boxes can be something that bites you in the tail end a little bit, but I think our team plays to it. Well, this guy came in and Lance McCullers jr. Who is the bury me in the H H town versus everyone guy literally said the only non Astros Jersey that I have in my house is Jose Abreu is a signed Jersey from him. And there is a lot of respect in this clubhouse for him. There's a lot of respect in this clubhouse for Dana Brown and what he's already brought to the table. Right. And this team not only has the veterans, but so they, we've got young kids making impressions. We've got a kid today that Dusty said, or this week said is his sleeper to make the roster for opening day. who wasn't even on anybody's real radar to make it opening day. And so there's a lot of really good things happening. Um, we've got several players going to the WBC concerns a lot of Astros fans. I think Astros fans just don't want their players to get hurt. They want them to play for their country. They understand the pride there, but there's a lot of really cool things going on in spring training and a lot to look forward to, especially with the different schedule. We're playing more teams. So that will definitely present another challenge as well. By the way, just, just think about this for a second. I mean, I think everyone thinks the Astros had a very productive off season. And I think, I yeah. think they had a very successful off season. When was the last time a team lost the Cy Young Award winner and you walked away saying it was a good offseason? I mean, that's how it, that's this you're is right. This I mean, it's right now from top to bottom, like the lone quote unquote defect in the lineup is Martin Maldonado. And I mean, he had a career high home runs last year. He also had a career high swings and misses and, and, and strikeouts, but you don't have an offensive catcher because you don't need that offense one through no. eight. I mean, you've got Kyle Tucker who could easily have a 30, 30 or a 40, 40 season in home runs and stolen bases easily, right. especially with the bending of the shift. Jordan Alvarez. We need to talk about him because he has not been swinging a bat. Yeah. He won't be ready till midway through spring training, but you've got a lot of potential in this lineup. And Alex Bregman said he never felt better than he did last postseason. And it's continued. He's healthy. He's separated from that really bad injury riddled year the year before. Um, so I'm fired up about that. And I'm fired about, about Jose Altuve. This guy just continues to be the face of the franchise. Right. And you know what? Look at, uh, you know, I mentioned the arrival of Abreu and what that can mean to a team and to sort of to add that little, I don't know, for the lack of a better word, like a little a little boost to energy that you know you've got a big star on your team looking for their first ring and, and that he wants to be alongside everyone else. And if you're looking for a burst of energy, it's kind of like Jose Abreu is the built bar for the Houston Astros. Now, look it. 
We're about to start the season. Everyone's saying, I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm in the best shape of my life. Are you in the best shape of your life? Well, do you want maybe a built bar can help you get there? Because if you want to eat healthier, but you want to compromise the taste, then I got the thing for you. You got to try built. Built is healthy, actually tasty. They're so delicious. You won't believe they're good for you. But do you want you're getting the ham bone loosened up to start the season? Built bars are the way to go. What makes them so good? For starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right. I didn't make that up. Real chocolate. They come in great flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. I'm not sure how Bill does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. And what's even better is that they're healthy. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait around for a box for years, literally years. We've been talking about ordering Built Bars at Built.com. Now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section. Say, give me them built bars. And they said, go over there. Relax. You get a four bar box of cookies, cream, double chocolate, coconut puffs, or maybe get my favorite, which is raspberry. Or you can go to the Sam's Club room and get a 13 bar box. I have one of those every single day. And with our hit flavors, brownie batter and churros, go get them. You can thank me later. And you can thank me as you sing that song. And everybody at home, sing it with me. Built Bars, they're still good. <laughs> now, what? this is what you need to do, Sully. Tell me if what you, I need to do. If you want premium YouTube content, yes, you need to have your son or, I mean, look, you're in the film industry, right? Or you know people. Yeah. Bring a camera crew to Walmart. And you need to say, where are them Built Bars? And you need to create a viral sensation sully goes for built bars so i just gonna, create this online youtube character and kids will like take selfies with you you'll be famous even more so than you are i mean I am, it seems I'm, like I'm a winning it sounds like a win-win so what i'm going to be the jim varney <laughs> or the uh larry the cable guy of <laughs> built bars i'll do you what i'll take it i yeah jim hey. varney did not die a poor man <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, and hey, I could, I could be your, I could be your get her done guy because I'm from yeah. Texas, so I can get the what? little, you know, Southern drawl. And 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 hey, look at Jim Varney was a voice in one of my all time favorite movies, which is Toy Story, and uh, and uh, of course Larry the Cable Guy did another Pixar. It was in the in the Cars movies. So that's right. You know, there, there's, if hey, if this is my if this is my ticket to Pixar, I'm in. There you I'm go. In. You, Huge Pixar fan. Uh, welcome to Locks, Locked On Pixar, where we talk about your favorite computer animated <laughs> films. Let's talk about Up. <laughs> I just oh, finished, man. I just stopped crying. Oh up. man, yeah, I I can't that that movie's still hard to get to. Like I I know exactly what happens, but it's like oh my gosh, like this yeah. dude, like he's he's the coolest, you know this this, this right. old guy and this kid. Oh, just love it. God. Just, uh, okay, I can't, cry. I can't cry right now. I can't cry. <laughs> hey, you teased something, H Town. Okay, you said that there was a player in camp that future Hall of Fame manager Dusty Baker. Mm. Well, come on, they, there's no argument against them now. No, uh, the the Hall of Fame bound manager That's Dusty right. Baker um, says that there's someone who's on nobody's radar that may have a shot to make the roster of the defending World Series champion. Spell it! All right. So it's Justin Dearden. He's 25 years old. He is a he is a lefty. He throws right, but he hits left. In 2022 in AAA, um, actually between AA and AAA, he hit 302, 477 at-bats, 101 RBI, 12 stolen bases, and a 942 OPS. In his career, in his two years, so this guy was an undrafted free agent when he came to the Astros. His career is 291, 39 home runs, 159 RBIs, 22 stolen bases, and a 939 Where does he play? OPS. Where does he he play? plays He plays in the outfield. They okay. list him as a right fielder, but he's got a hell of an arm. And if Chas McCormick fumbles a little bit or Jake Myers doesn't fulfill the need, and Justin Verlander's gone, so Mauricio Dubon can't be Justin Verlander's personal outfielder, as Dusty Baker dubbed him last year. Dearden is making waves. He already has three home runs in spring training, and he's only played in three games. Now, I'm not saying the guy's going to hit a 1,000 home runs this year, 
But I saw him play in Corpus. My son and I did. I saw him play several times in Sugarland, And I was never not amazed at what this kid could produce. At 25 years old, Justin Dearden could be on the outside looking in and on the bubble and possibly make this roster come opening day. That's wild. That's unbelievable. Well, and by the way, like, what are some of the other, um, you said a lot of, there have been a lot of things happening in uh, yeah. the spring train right now. Let's go through some of the top stories that are going around there and some of the best sort of, uh, you know, battles for positions or yeah. we're trying to get a sense of who's doing what at this point. So, you know, basically first base is cemented, second base is cemented, shortstop. Basically your infield is, yeah, you, you, you know, we're pretty sure that it's going to be Abreu, Altuve, <laughs> Pena, and Bregman. There's, which there's is, not, which is you're not going to say, a, oh, there's a guy who is for you know, There's a guy challenging the, Altuve for a Yeah, spot, congr- right? good, good luck with that. So, luck with we're, that. so right now we're looking at who's going to be the backup catcher behind Martin Maldonado. Because Martin Maldonado will probably get about 70% of the starts. Whoever wins the backup will get about 30%. And that's going to be between Yanner Diaz and Corey Lee. Now, Corey Lee is considered the better defensive catcher, although he's not super great defensively. And Yanner Diaz is considered the better hitter. He's hit um, 300 in almost every league that he's been in coming up to the majors. He he kind of had a poor showing when he came up to the majors late, late last year, but he didn't really get a whole lot of opportunities. So I would take that as a small sample size and with a grain of salt. If they're going for offense for Maldi's backup, they go with Yonder Diaz. I think he has the leg up on Corey Lee. So that backup catcher situation is there. Um, you have Ronel Blanco, who made a name for himself this winter, did a phenomenal job, and now in three innings pitched has six strikeouts where last year he pitched seven and one-thirds innings and only had three strikeouts and gave up like eight runs. And Blanco came up and – he just, he just didn't perform the way they wanted him to. Ronel Blanco may make this pitching staff as a relief pitcher. He may be someone they're looking at to extend out as a starter because Lance McCullers will not start healthy opening day. So they're going to let him, I think, in about seven or eight days, start throwing again, start playing catch, but he will not be ready for opening day. So that's kind of a big story. You know, Lance McCullers is the guy that, you know, they signed the five-year, $85 million deal. Mm-hmm. They gave him starter money. But everybody in Houston says it seems like all signs are pointing to a relief role are pointing to a back end of the bullpen role because he's such a good thrower. He he throws the curveball. He throws the off-speed stuff. He throws with such velocity. But his motion is so violent on his elbow, and that elbow has just been through all kinds of heck. Um, him starting for, out. By the way, thanks for cleaning up the language. I do <laughs> his his. You're welcome. His um, him starting out unhealthy has has drawn a lot of people. Like, oh, we know Lance is always hurt. Another pitcher that I want to talk about, Forrest Whitley. This is a make or break year for okay. Forrest Whitley. Now, now for okay. you and me, for you and me, what is the significance of Forrest Whitley? Do you he, remember? Do you remember? No, I picked him to win Rookie of the Year a few years ago. Okay, and he okay. got and he got and he went right on the disabled list. That's right. So he now he pitched his first out and he came out. He actually looked he looked pretty good. Um, he has toyed with his mechanics and he said he's feeling good. I hear the velocity's not not as high as it was, but that's probably because he's not trying to throw over a hundred like he was as a young pitcher. You know, a couple things here and there, a PED suspension, injuries, Tommy John, all these things. This kid was drafted back in like, what, 2016? And he's just now getting to the major. So Forrest Whitley is in a make or break year. Then the big guy, Jordan Alvarez, the Cuban commander, the Cuban missile, the dude that just puts fear in the hearts of pitchers is hurt right now in his yeah. hand that was bothering him last year, which I think is some of the reason why after the ALDS, you didn't see much out of him um, until like game six of the World Series when it really mattered. And I was at that game. I still can't believe the ball went over the batter's eye. But his hand has not allowed him to start hitting. He's supposed to start hitting within the next few days. If you're listening 
to this on Friday, probably the week after you hear this, he may start hitting in the cage. Dana Brown expects him to be ready opening day. I think because he didn't have surgery on his hand, whatever it is, because they're not disclosing it, which concerns me, um, is this seems like it's going to be a nagging thing throughout the year. So I would expect if Jordan doesn't fully heal, you're going to see him on a couple IL stints throughout the season. Right. So you got that. You've got, you know, if Dearden comes up, he can be a utility guy. David Hensley is going to be one of you. He's going to take a Libes Diaz's role. He's not as strong as a hitter. He's not as good as a glove overall, but mm-hmm. he's decent. He's got he's got good plate discipline. So you you got those things. And then Dana Brown throws out Drew Gilbert from the University of Tennessee and says, I'm challenging him to make the roster this year. And I'm like, whoa, hold on. The dude ran through a wall and almost broke his shoulder last year. Like, like Dana Brown's like, I want this guy. They're high on Drew Gilbert. They are really high on Drew Gilbert. Now, I'm not saying he makes it this year, but his arrival is going to be sooner rather than later. So there's a lot of exciting things going on in camp. There are a lot of storylines. There is we we are not short of content at Locked On Astros. And look at uh, despite all this, I'm gonna make, go out of a limb here and okay. say that the Astros have to be the odds on favor if you're making a bet to win the division again. And if you're making any bets, go to FanDuel Sportsbook. Now look at we are roughly at the halfway mark of the NBA season. And it's the perfect time to download the FanDuel app on your phone, smartphone, iPhone, whatever you got. It's America's number one sports book. New customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just download, easy for you to say, the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and easy to use. Then you can bet on anything from the money line to point scores to threes drained, plus FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets. When you go to fanduel.com slash locked on, that's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the National Basketball Association. All right. Um, before I got on the phone here, or what is this? We get on the Zoom, whatever this thing is called. <laughs> I'm an old doddering You're man. Like, before I, before I dialed you up. <laughs> you remember that? Do you, do you remember, do you remember the rotary dial? Oh, if you, if my you got a number wrong, you had to hang up and start over again? Oh, my grandmother had kids, one. Kids these days don't, don't, don't know. Yeah, you don't understand kids. having to memorize phone numbers. <laughs> memorize them. Oh there yeah. Some, it, it, there's some people whose numbers I just knew the pattern of. I didn't someone, know the... someone asked me what my son's phone number was. I said Sammy. Yeah. <laughs> That's a phone my, number. Could I tell you my son's phone number for $10 million. So give me $10 million. Put it in front of me. It's mine, tax free. Tell me your son's phone number. I can't. I pass. You know, I know I know the first three digits. I know the area code, but oh congrats. After that, I'm lost. Congrats. You figured out the area code. All right, um, I'm gonna make you mad, Brett. Uh-oh. H town, yeah. it's time it's time for I should have a I should have a graphic. Sully makes H Town mad. And it happens every time we come here. And I'm gonna make you mad. Okay. Because I'm gonna do something that um and it's not official, but whenever I do this, it dooms a team. Absolutely oh. dooms a team. As I'm sitting here right now in the luxurious Sully Baseball Locked On MLB Studios in Pasadena, California, windy Pasadena, California, Mm. overlooking the historic Rose Bowl, on this date, this is being dropped on the third day of March, or as we called it, a New England match of the year of our Lord, 2023. At this moment, I am picking the Houston Astros to repeat as World Series champions, which means go to FanDuel.com, download the app, and bet on any team other than the Astros because 
You know, the kiss of death that Michael Corleone gave Fredo. Wow. That's what I just See? gave to the Astros. And let the record show. In the past, I have picked the Red Sox to win the World Series. And you know what it did? It doomed them too. Well, Sully, I think this team might be. Might Sully be. First proof? Yeah, I, I, I think they're. I think. I don't think the Madden cover curse kind of thing is going to work with this team. Now, I will say this. Last year's team did not have to deal with injuries, and they were very blessed to not have to deal with what most teams deal with over the most back, part. They got right? back Verlander, who had missed the prior two exactly. seasons. Exactly. And it's like they it's like they looked in their a jacket that they haven't worn since December, and there was a Cy Young Award winner in there. <laughs> Exactly. So, you know, they got a Cy they, Young Award winner for nothing. They had exactly. They they had a magical run. Okay. And 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 here's why I think this team, though, unlike any other team since the Yankees did it, will do it and can get past the Sully curse, is this is going to be their seventh straight ALCS that they make. The seventh straight. Mm-hmm. Seven's a lucky number. I love that number. Okay. They're going to go to the World Series and they're not going to win the World Series the way that you typically win a World Series or the way that they're supposed to. They're going to do it with, football. they're going to do it. Do what? <laughs> they're going to be playing football. What are they going to no, be doing? No, I'm just saying they're going to do this with people that are, are, are going to make an impact on this team that haven't normally made an impact. And they're they're they are you're gonna see Jose Abreu have some key playoff moments. I mean, this guy wants a ring. Mm-hmm. And Dusty Baker said, I told you when I want when I win one, I'm gonna get two. And because Dusty tells me he's here to get two, I know that Dusty's gonna keep his word. And so well, in Dusty, we trust him. Yeah, I mean, you, I think Dusty's gonna lead him to the third three straight pennants for Baker. Yeah. Um I think Great. back-to-back titles, um, you know, I, I, I look at, I, you know, I mean, book the prey. The only question is, will it be a three-peat? And um, no, look, I just I look at, and, and we all know that, that being the best team in the regular season doesn't necessarily translate, you know, Tampa Bay a couple of years ago were heads and shoulders, the best team in the American league. And yet they ran into a Boston team that got hot at the right time, which were a uh, um, one very bad call on a Nathan Eovaldi pitch away from taking that game four tied to the bottom of the ninth. And chances are the Astros don't rally. Okay, the Astros are better than the Red Sox in 2021. I got to let go of that, okay? <laughs> but I really thought they were going to be up three to one in that series. Yeah, but no, I, I, was... I, I got to go. I got I to gotta frozen this and let it go. Um I think the the Astros are uh, the you know this is a shot of being three straight trips to the World Series. I like how the team is constructed, and I take a look at the other teams in the in the league. Do I think the Yankees are a good team? Yes, they're flawed, but they're a good team. I think Toronto is going to be a little better than they were last year. I think those two teams are going to be close together. I think they're. I got a lot of flack from people from Yankee fans saying I'm not declaring them a hundred win team. I think they're well, both 90, 90 some odd win teams in Toronto and with New York. I think I think Cleveland well, and Minnesota look. are going to battle it out, and I think Tampa is going to be hanging around. I think Seattle is going to be hanging around, and 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 there'll probably be a surprise team. I, I I don't believe in Baltimore. I'm sorry. There'll be some team we're not expecting hanging around the wild card chase. But I, you look at it, and of all those teams head to head against Houston, barring catastrophic injury i don't see any of them being better than houston i i would have to agree i think seattle i think minnesota might be that team in the central um with carlos correa resigning there i i just think that you might have some good things finally come out of minnesota they just always seem to be kind of the third or fourth tier not a, not quite in the top two tiers but look what what the astros have have before them is they have this opportunity to go into this season, not only with the target on their back, but to show the league that they can still 
that that they can still do it. They can do it without Verlander. They can do it without their big stars and the cast of characters that they have. I I, I just don't like outside of Seattle, outside of um, I think like you said, Toronto's going to be good. the The Yankees are better, but the Astros didn't do this, and the Astros don't do this. What did What did Dave Roberts say last year about the Dodgers? We're going to win the World Series. Mid season, what did the, What did the Yankees say? Oh, they could win 120 games. And I mean, even um, one of their pitchers, and I can't remember which one it was, Mike King. I can't remember who it was. Said, "Well, the Astros, if they if they try to." you know, compete with us when we're hot, you know, they don't stand a chance. I'm like, we did compete with y'all when you were hot. We threw a no hitter at Yankee stadium in June when you're supposedly supposed to win 120 games. The right. difference between the Astros and the other teams is the Astros go on the field and let their play do the talking. They don't make predictions. They just say, okay, we're here. They've been there. They it's, you act like you ne- you play like you've never won it. And when you step on the field, you act like you own it. Which is why I'm picking them, and it's the guaranteed pick. <laughs> well, I put Dave my Marley. money. I put my money on the Astros for a second Go straight season. To do that right there. <laughs> oh man, you should never give me the controls to the graphics. We'll look at Brett <laughs> Chancy is also known as when his Justice League moniker is H Town Wheelhouse. Um, depending on who you talk to, whether it's in the Justice League or Legion of Doom, depends on which fan base you're referring to at that time. There is one thing the Astros have not accomplished. What's that? And I believe in my heart of hearts, they need to do this. This is the thing that, look at, there are Astro fans out there like you who are rabid fans, great fans, have stuck by this team through the lean years and everything. The Valbuena years, okay? Oh, yeah. And then you have people who abhor the Astros. They're out there. Don't pretend they don't exist. Right. But there's one thing that everyone wants. And if the Astros are to win another World Series, as I predict they do, there's one thing they have to do differently this year that everybody wants to see that might be the kumbaya moment that makes even Astros haters happier to see them celebrate. And it's quite simple. When they run onto the field for the 2023 World Series, taking on the San Diego Padres, as I'm currently picking. Wow. They need to be wearing their tequila sunrise uniforms. Because that's the if we if we're cheering for laundry, we've seen them win a World Series. We've seen them win a second World Series. Whatever you think about the first World Series, no one can take away the second World Series. But we haven't seen a Tequila Sunrise World Series, which we all want to see. To quote Bob Watson in Bad News Bears breaking trainings, come on, let the kids play. Put on those unis. Cesar Cedeno wants that. The late J.R. Richard wants that. Hell. Nolan Ryan wants that. Bust those babies out in the name of Mike Scott, in the name of Enos Cabell, in the name of Andy Ashby, in the name of Joe Necro. How many more of these do I have to say? Jose Cruz! How many do we need to say to see them celebrating in those uniforms? Come on! Even the biggest diehard Yankee fan. Okay, they would hate it. But the fact (laughs) of the matter is... We all want to see that. We all love those uniforms. We, Bust them out. You know, I have, and of, of course, I'm not going to run and get it right now, but I actually have. Please don't. Um, no, no. <laughs> I actually have two. I have two bobbleheads where they're wearing the um, Tequila Sunrise jerseys, Jordan Alvarez and Jose Altuve. Um, I'll post those on Twitter um, for your fans to see. Everybody wants to see that. Um, look, I would rather them wear that than the. You know, I like the Space City jersey because, you know, I'm five minutes from Mission Control. Yeah, it's, yeah. But I want the Tequila Sunrise jerseys. Yes. I want I want Bob yeah. Nepper. I want, yes. you know, do you realize how good Bob Nepper was? Yeah, oh, was, my he, God. He, he was had about five or six years. Good. He was elite. Yeah. He was unreal. You know, Sully, this team is poised to go back and win it. But they know, and Bregman said it best. The season doesn't start in the postseason. We've got to win a lot of games and do a lot of things right before we get to the postseason. And that's why I like the mindset of this team. 
I love it down from the owner all the way down to the minor league coaches. And get this, Sully, we just hit 7,000 subscribers this week there you go. on YouTube. So yeah. it's going to be a big year for us at, at the show as well. Well, look, it's a great show. And tell people where they can listen to it. Yeah, they can listen to us on YouTube, on Apple, Google, or Spotify. It's free and easy to listen to on anywhere you get your podcast. And if you tune into YouTube, I am supposed to be squaring off against J.C. Correa, Carlos Ooh. Correa's younger brother, in a ping pong match when I get to spring training, uh, March 11th through the 19th. So if that does happen and we're able to line up our schedules, I'm going to make some really cool YouTube content throw it up there. And while I'm down there, Sully, I get to go to the World Baseball Classic. Dominican Republic versus Israel. I'm stoked. Wow. That's pretty. That's what a matchup. Gee, I wonder who's favorite in that one. Uh, by the <laughs> way, thanks thanks for making Locked On MLB and Locked On Astros your first two listens. Your third listen, have that be Locked On Fantasy Baseball. Win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies Find Locked On Fantasy Baseball wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team every day. Our show is available uh, wherever you get your podcasts. We're on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at Locked On MLB Pods. Same handle for Instagram. I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter. Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. And I'm hard at work uh, just before opening day for the latest edition of the Sully Baseball Memoriam video. Um, I'm going to be tugging a few heartstrings as, mm. as always. Um, Vin Scully, um, Bruce Souter, Chucky Carr, Gaylord Perry, former Red Sox, Wynn Remischwall. There's a bunch of them are going to be in there. Uh, it's going to be, uh, uh, it's going to be something. It's going to be something. I've already have, I'm, I've picked the music out. Um, it is not Surfing Bird by the Trashmen. It's going to be something a little more, uh, uh, low key. But uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be something. But anyway, keep an eye on that. Hey, what's going on there? I hope that was a family member. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey. No. Say hello to the good folks at Locked On MLB. Who is you that? Who am I looking at? That, that's my son, Samuel. Oh, Sammy, Sammy, <laughs> Uncle <laughs> Uncle Sam, Uncle yeah. Sam. He actually right. is an uncle. I have I a know, grandson. I know. Now, so I yeah, know. That's go. right. That's right. Uncle Sam. Well, look at. Uncle Sam wants you to listen to Locked On MLB. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. For God's sakes, call me Sully.